You know the real shout out Buck TV gang. Keep it locked, the Buck TV. Keep it locked, the Buck TV, right here. Shoot the shout out to Buck TV. Keep it locked, Buck TV. Keep it locked in the Buck TV. Buck TV, out there hustle, keep winning. Keep it locked, the Buck TV, man. Yeah, man, Buck TV, man. Get Buck no man. What's going on? It's your boy B.I. to the G.A. right here reporting live for Buck TV News. With your boy DJ Mitty Mitty. Oh. Man, today's show is specifically about professionalism and the independent artists that are being treated unfairly and unjust in this f***ed up music f***ing career, music system. So, um, well, yeah, Mehdi, go ahead, man. Yeah, Mehdi is the, uh, the, the professional guy. I don't give a f I'm going to just say what the f I want to say out my f mouth. But, Mehdi, go ahead and take over before I keep saying some stupid So, recently, we sat in on an interview. We were invited to an recently interview. Recently, we sat in on an interview, and uh, I was filming this shit, right? And Mehdi had an interview at a, a radio, an independent radio station, right? And Mehdi was saying some, um, some, some real shit, right? He... he pretty much got everybody all stirred up with the comments that he laid down in this uh, interview. Matter of fact, let's play a little clip so y'all can catch up on what we're talking about. Play the clip, Mehdi. Okay. Play the clip! What do you think is missing in the Carolina music scene? Professionalism. Wow. Mm. I agree. No, no, it's not what I think is missing, but I know it's missing. Right, right. I have these conversations, you know, because I'm from Charlotte. Right, right. Charlotte has plenty of talent. Mm -hmm. That ain't the problem. The problem is you don't got no managers or entertainment attorneys to handle the talent. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between doing music and doing music business. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Charlotte don't got no music business. Mm -hmm. Major key. But <laughs> part of the problem is, okay, so if you look at another market, a manager or an independent label will be somebody that used to be an artist because the music industry is pimps and hoes. You be a hoe first and you become a pimp. That's the whole industry. Mm -hmm. this, this is the issue that I have, and I don't have no personal problems with these people because I love all of them. Mm -hmm. But when you got people like Anthony Hamilton, Calvin Richardson, Sunshine Anderson, mm -hmm. Adina Howard, Joe to see, you know, so Damn. you got people that made it in the industry, mm. but they're not managing new talent. Mm -hmm. Even Rocco, when he was an artist, had enough businesses to manage future. Yo, that was a long ass fucking clip, yo. It was only one minute of a guy. Is this our show or what? What the fuck? All right, so check it, man. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna be straight up. Anthony Hamilton. Anthony Hamilton is gonna fuck you up. <laughs> Calvin Richardson is gonna come fuck you up, man. You talk shit, b. Yeah, clarify what the hell you been talking about in this in this interview, bro. Cause the people wanna know. Because if I was Anthony Hamilton, I'd be like, yo, what the fuck that shit you was saying, bro? Atlanta and some of these other major markets like L.A., Chicago, New York are having an easier time getting their new artists pushed through because artists that used to be artists are now coming back as managers, CEOs, to pimp the new artists in the game because, you know, the whole game is pimps and hoes. It's owners and players. It's investors and investees. Mm. Because you have to learn the game before you can be a game boss. You have to work for Taco. You have to work for a food establishment before you can manage that food establishment. A lot of franchises require that. So, explain yourself on what the fuck you said in this fucking interview. So, that that was your breakdown? That was your... Like, you was like, you like, you was preaching some pimp to me just now. Like, nigga, tell me what the fuck. Break this down to the people watching. Don't be trying to run that pimp on me. <laughs> well, the video clip is on Buck TV Network. Yeah. But some of the comments, people had deeper questions that we need to address. Yeah, it's on. On social media and on the internet. On Instagram. So we just want to address to some of the questions that we were asked. Because people have more questions based on the video that they saw. Mm -hmm. right. So Sholem underscore underscore said, I agree with you, but. I agree with you, bro. You a professionalismist. <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to be reading this shit. <laughs> I agree, bro. Do you know anybody that can help us in this market? Obviously, in the video, I don't know anybody that can help you in this market. I, hey, look here. I do know somebody. Me. Come to me. 
I can help get you on right now. Ain't going to make it records. I'm a professional uh, lawyer. Um, I'm a fucking entertainment attorney. Uh, what else I do? I do all that shit. Sign with me today and I'll make sure you ain't going nowhere. Ain't going to make it records. Then you got 73 Ocean Lovers say you will make an amazing manager or even CEO of Medi Entertainment. Sounds good, right? Well, Medi Media is an official company, mm -hmm. but no, I'm not interested in managing at the moment because there is still information and knowledge that I need to gain to ma manage people appropriately. So what the fuck is Medi Entertainment? That's not a company yet. That's what she said the name of the oh, company what should the be. She said you... You will, you will, and I guess you will be an amazing manager or even CEO of Medi. And, oh, she, yeah. oh, I got you. I got so you. So Medi Media does do consultation for a lot of different things in the entertainment Medi -media, aspect. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah. what the fuck is Medi? But no, we do not manage artists. We we don't have enough information or knowledge to do that yet. La Juice Box made a comment. That's mm -hmm. the show. Shout out to La Juice Box, OG Boss Tech, the Goddess Bree, Goddess Bree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the juice box said you spit some real stuff. It seemed like nobody wanted to say it. And in this entertainment industry, particularly on the urban side, there's a lot. It's the of gotta step, man. Get the get the people name right, man. They won't bring you back on the <laughs> show, man. Her name is Bree. Step and Bree. <laughs> okay. All right, man. We we'll find. Is he fucked up? You don't even know who show you. Nah, let me stop, man. Yeah, go ahead. You spit some real shit. It seemed like no one wanted to say it, but Medi said the shit. He spit some real shit. But you got to think, if you around Medi, he talk like this all day. So this ain't nothing new. You feel me? And in urban entertainment, there's a lot of things that people don't want to say because they don't want to get blackballed out of the game. Mm -hmm. When it comes to passion, I've just gotten to the point now where I'm just tired of holding it in. I'm ready to start talking about some of the things that people will not, things that people will not tell me that I had to go years and years and go from person to person to find the information. You went after Calvin Richardson. You went after Anthony Hamilton. I don't, I don't want to say you went after them. You, but you, I mentioned. You name dropped some names that made it, you know, at a, a nationwide, right? Some international or just? Yeah, definitely. All yeah. of them. Probably international. So so you, you, you name dropped some names. So why put their names out there as of why they didn't help? Or... Because you got to understand, they're artists themselves. They probably didn't have the business savvy mentality to go back and help. But they got the experience. The experience of being an artist, not a manager or a business manager. Who's better to, to teach Kobe like, Bryant how to shoot basketball than somebody that made the NBA shooting basketball? Exactly. <laughs> but you, you got to understand, too, you have to have that mindset to manage okay so even if they don't manage mentor okay but but who's to say oh it's your job to mentor now you got to this level now you got a mentor everybody always talk about they giving back to the community what better community service than to teach people what you've learned through experience now, now my my perspective on it is they still i guess they haven't gotten to where they're you know reached their goal or whatever none of us have reached our goal so how the f if they take the time out to try to reach back and help sometimes you don't even have to take time out allow an artist whose talent that you believe in to tour with you allow somebody to see from experience sometimes you don't even have to talk allow somebody to be around you while you're handling them phone calls or handling that road flying on them planes getting that money Signing them contracts in the meetings. Mm -hmm. People can learn from just being around. Now, now, I'm, I'm going to shut that shit down right quick. I'm not letting nobody that I don't fucking know. I just said somebody who that you believe in. That's what I just said. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. I really didn't hear that. <laughs> I, I just went through one ear and not the other. But, yeah, okay. Somebody who you believe in. So, you believe in your circle. Somebody in your circle is not a fucking artist. Somebody in your circle is an artist. So what about the outside artist that, you know, that's in the city or the area or the state you're it's from? It's better to give the some than to give the none. Because the person that you give to can give to somebody else. All that shit is good. But like I'm saying, these artists are focusing on their craft and reinventing themselves. So how are they going to have time to work 
on someone else when they're trying to recreate themselves. Listen, if you don't have an, enough time to put into somebody else's success story, you're not painting a picture for your own success story. Like I said, every it's pimps and hoes, it's owners and players, it's investors and investees. Mm -hmm. A lot of CEOs, VPs for major entertainment companies right now started off as interns and apprentice mm -hmm. somewhere. You got to start at the bottom. You got to start somewhere. I'm so, not even saying so the this bottom. So this is a message to the up and coming. Absolutely. Okay. Tupac, it's a known fact, used to carry crates for Humpty Dumpty. Mm -hmm. That's how he got into the group Diggable, uh, Digital Underground. Digital. All right, so basically he wasn't what, even in the group. Ba basically, what I'll you're tell saying, you, I'll tell you a closer one. I'll tell you a better one that if you go on the Buck TV network, you might can find this interview. Mm. Ty Dolla Sign said he was just the hype man for DJ Mustard mm -hmm. and YG. He wasn't even an artist. Mm -hmm. He was just with them. I don't think you can find that interview right now due to uh, technical uh, difficulties and uh, uh, contractual obligations. Uh, you're not going to find that interview right now. But we can see if we can pull up that clip and drop it individually. But so basically you're telling me that the up and comings need to be positioning themselves. Connect yourself. Yeah. Position, connect yourself to the mainstream artists because they're here. Even if they're not here, you have to put yourself in position. You know, a lot, of, a lot of things that I notice about the mainstream, I mean, the independent artists, they look at themselves as a mainstream already. You know, they might have the money, so they want to buy the jewelry or whatever, try to flex and pay for an expensive video, but still be complaining about, oh, they're not letting us in. Motherfucker, stop putting yourself as competition so early. Because that's exactly what you're doing. Because if you put yourself as competition to me, I'm going to knock your ass the fuck out every time because I condition and train for what the fuck I, uh, but what you I know, do every day. It's just business. It's just business. Because and me knocking you out, like not physically, but I'm just saying like in the field, the professional field that I'm in, it's just business because if the I'm artist, not letting you take my spot. Okay. So if the artists, the new up and coming artists want to get connected to the established artists, mm -hmm. An established artist looking, but you're an artist and I'm an artist. Get that contract signed. Get that contract so that established yeah. artist getting a percentage of whatever you, as the new artist, does. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, it don't matter if you surpass me or not because I'm getting paid off of you. So, and, and okay, so even passing beyond the point of saying uh, connecting yourself with the established artist, um, the professionalism you were speaking about. Like, like you just mentioned, percentages. Baby, baby gets paid off Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. Lil Wayne gets paid off for Drake, Nicki Minaj, and Young Money. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't. Did Lil Wayne get a check yet? Because I don't think he. Oh, really yeah. He get, definitely getting money off of Drake and, and Nicki, Nicki okay, Minaj. Okay, okay, Absolutely. Okay, okay. And Drake is getting paid it, off. It, that was like a joke. Go ahead, man. You, you Drake saying. is getting paid off the weekend and party next <laughs> I know door. Birdman getting paid off of every body, but go ahead, man. Go ahead. But yeah, but the professionalism of understanding paperwork, paperwork meaning, um, you know, your performance rights organizations, registering your music, doing splits with people that can help you out. Because even if you don't have that money up front to pay someone for services, offer percentages of your publishing. There's no business that goes on in America or anywhere that there's nothing's getting split. Money has to get split somewhere for people to help. You, I mean, that's bottom line. It's whether, just business. Whether you have the cash up front, you're splitting money up somewhere to push it to get done. The cash or the back end, front end or back end. Simple as that. So basically, we need some business uh, uh, split classes, percentage classes. How, how do it get split down? It's basically like simple negotiation. What do you want? Hey, this is our song. I want uh fifty percent. You want fifty percent? Okay, I right, out of my fifty, I'm gonna break this down with such and such because they're gonna help with this. Out of your fifty, you gotta connect over here. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just simple math. You break it down like one hundred percent, and you break it up to however many people you gotta divide it amongst. Simple as that. That's my take on it. Mitty, I agree. All right, so wrapping this shit up, what what's the uh? Synopsis of this whole professionalism in the independent artists and the professional. 
Mainstream. Make sure you follow DJ Medi on all social media at DJ MED103. And follow your boy B I to the G A Y A B O I B I G A, Mr. Buck TV. Or you can follow the company page, B U C K TV, Buck TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Instagram, Twitter. Subscribe, like, a comment. Hold on, hold on, man. Slow down, man. We got to give our shout outs, man. You know, we got the, the new B King, B King Apparel. On top of B King Apparel. You feel me? For sponsoring this shit. Ha <laughs> ha! Cuzzo's Cuisine, you feel me? HLR Custom Graphics, you feel me? The team. Of course, Medi Media put up the, the uh, I can't think of the big word right now, but for the wonderful, uh, warm sounding vocals that you're hearing right now, that make us sound professional with these cheap ass microphones. <laughs> 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 but yeah, man, your boy Big A Bug TV, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, man. We out this mother. Get some business by yourself. <laughs>